I grew up in Swampscott, Massachusetts, on the north shore of Boston. I was born on Friday the 13th in Salem, Massachusetts. I would draw monsters, then I would make up sequences. If there was something that was going on that was difficult, that I couldn't control, I could you know, sort of control this environment. I wanted to be the best at something. I went to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. I was a sculptor in the beginning in the BFA program. The people in Boston, ah, yeah, yeah, be an artist, you're not gonna, you know, never go anywhere with that. I never stopped wanting to be a film director. I started getting books, horror makeup, sculpting, creatures and things in my spare time, working as a graphic designer, trying to get a BFA in interior design. I had this dream to do main titles, and I remember saying, wow, that's a way that I can still be a graphic designer, but I could do film. And I was this kind of working class kid doing my internship at Wang, getting a proper typographic education from these Yale graduates. They made it seem possible that I could apply to Yale when this internship was over. So I got into Yale. For me, that was like a total coup. Paul Ram was always saying, you gotta keep your hand in it, brother. I sort of hung on every word that he would say. And Greenberg called and said, we can hire you as a freelancer. He wasn't sure if I had an aptitude for motion, you know, but I could do the print. And then maybe I could pitch when they had a main title. The first main title that I pitched on was Life Lessons for Martin Scorsese's movie. He picked my board. It just seemed like a logical progression to start a company because I wanted to keep doing main titles. Open up Henry V and I saw Imaginary Forces. And I was like, yeah, that's a good name. I didn't really have all these business aspirations. You know, I want to start a design company. I always trying to figure out how I can shoot my stuff and sit in the edit room and make everything without having one frame that I would want to change. I was fighting this fight with my friends to figure out how to get it all done. And we worked like crazy. People were making commitments based on me working on something that I didn't even know that I was expected to work on. I couldn't control it. I always felt like turning things down was a compromise. And now that I have to run Prologue, I don't have any business partners and I don't have a boss, how do I figure out how to get everything done that everybody's asking me to do? The name Prologue is from Henry V, who Prologue like, your humble patients pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play. The great thing about main titles, it is a prologue. Seven titles becomes the first scene of the movie. It is the movie. We're making prologues that serve the movie that become the first scene, but we're also kind of infiltrating the body of the film itself, and we're making films. I think people react positively to the work because there's an earnestness about it. Whether we like it or not, we're storytellers and content creators. We have to know how to make something look good but also communicate. You have to try to make somebody feel something, and that's hard. The legacy that I am proud of is that we did elevate main titles. And I'm proud to be a graphic designer, even though I'm a filmmaker. Now that Eisenman, he said to me, Kyle, the world needs more graphic designers than filmmakers. And I'm like, that's so discouraging. But the reality is the best filmmakers are graphic designers. They know how to see.